I'm going to talk about how to build 3D experiences in React Native, or, or as the subtitle say, says, I'm going to sell you the idea of trying Expo GL and React 3 Fiber in your next project. Uh, and I'm going to start with the slide that I spent the most time working on, because I come from Finland and we hate talking about each other, or ourselves mainly. I don't mind talking about other people, but myself. Uh, that's my name, Perttu Lähteenlahti. Turns out it's a subtle, difficult and long name that it wasn't even fully visible in the first slide for some reason. Uh, I'm based in Helsinki and Brussels at the same time, uh, so I travel quite a lot. And what I've done previously uh, is kind of random. I used to be a carpenter, then I was like, it would be really cool to be a cognitive neuroscientist. And then I started studying that, and I realized that, no, actually, design is more of my thing. And then, for some reason, I ended up building the stuff that I designed, and then I found React Native in 2017, and that's what I've been doing as a job since then. But yeah, that's it about me. So, what we're going to go through today, my original idea was that we're going to do uh, live coding, and you would get, basically get to witness like a child learning to speak, which would have been me, basically learning 3D experiences. But my original plan did not include me flying from Japan this morning uh, and being very jet-lagged. So I had to scrap that idea, because I thought that there might be a possibility that I don't learn to talk here on the stage, so I don't learn the life coding stuff well enough uh, in this time. So we can talk about why build 3D experiences. Then we're going to talk about a little bit Expo GL. Move on from there to why you should use probably something uh, to make it a bit easier, and then talk about something called mental models, as, as I was a big fan of saying when I was still doing cognitive neuroscience, and moving all that into a React world. And then in the end, just going to really quickly look at some alternatives that are coming along. Uh, and this all starts with... Uh, with a company that I've been working with called Noise, uh, which uses quite a lot of uh, 3D experiences, actually. And, well, if you don't know what streaming is, uh, Twitch and Kick are pretty good examples of that. So you watch other people play games, and that's about it. But at Noise, the idea is that that's not very engaging. It's not, not fun. So instead, what if instead of just watching the stream, you could play the stream? And instead of you just being a username in the chat, you could be like an actual person. So it uses avatars, for example. And I think I have a video here, but I also can show like the actual game here. So, well, the stream actually just ended on this guy. But you can see there's a website. You can watch streams. Uh, there are 3D avatars. Those are your characters, for example, who did the best game. I'm going to show you what a game actually looks like, so you get the idea. But what you're basically doing is you're trying to guess what the players are going to do next, or the streamers, so to say. So you can see the 3D avatars there again. You can pick a card, you can play. This is what noise does. And I'm currently working on taking all of this, all of this complex stuff, and putting it into a mobile app built with React Native. And I've been doing that for six months now, and we're hopefully releasing this month. Unfortunately, I can't show you anything of that app, because we are a very secretive company. But that's, that's a bad thing. No. Yeah, but yeah, Noise makes a very big use of 3D. For example, the avatars are customizable. You can sell clothes and everything, or buy clothes for them and customize them in every kind of way. And then we also have the stream area, where you basically watch with other uh, stream viewers, and all of that is runs in the browser very nicely, but how do you get the same experience of being like very engaging experience in a mobile view? So I started looking into getting the same experience, and noise is actually not a, just one thing, it's four different clients, so we have one for streamers and one for the watchers and so on, and there's a big monorepo code base. So the point case would of course be that we could reuse as much of the code, that's why we have a React Native app, and React apps on the, web, uh, on the website. Uh, and we would like to reuse as much as possible, even on the 3D side. And, well, everything on noise.com is implemented with WebGL. Uh, 
and already implemented. So why not just throw it in the web view? Well, the goal for the noise app in this case, and uh, I just want to point out, is that we want to make it like as native and as uh, good that it can be, basically better than the web. And you, you just saw the web, there's a lot of catching up to do. Uh, so just using web views is not really going to cut it. Uh, instead, we need something else. Uh, and for you who don't, you're not that familiar with WebGL, uh, so that's the JavaScript API for rendering 3D stuff in, in browsers. And for React Native, uh, you have ExpoGL, which is OpenGL rendering target. So, well, put in, in, in one way, kind of like a corresponding thing. And it's not a web view. Uh, and the only minor downside that I've figured out and that have had it is with that you can't really do de development on the simulator. It just doesn't work. So you have to use a real device. That's the only thing. Uh, but getting started with it, very easy. Just start, start a new blank template with a TypeScript, for example. Install the Expo GL dependency, and you're technically ready to go. Uh, our, well, if you have a bare project, it takes a little bit more figuring out, but it's not that difficult. There's, for some reason, multiple blog posts about how to get it running on a bare React Native project. Uh, but I think that is a bit of a hard way to do things, and I don't see it, you know, if the code is there. Uh, you in the back, hope you brought your binoculars. Uh, but after you add the GL view from Expo GL, you can start writing code, uh, but it's not necessarily that familiar with you, especially if you've mainly written well, React Native and React. You're instead writing something what's called shaders. And I personally, when I started on this, had no experience with those, because I've only done web and mobile development. So I needed something else, uh, because for me, this was very intimidating, and also took a lot of writing. So thankfully, there's an easier way. 3.js uh, allows you to stuff, do stuff a lot more easier. So instead of the, using like writing shaders, you use building blocks, so to say, like mesh, which is like the box here in this case, combining uh, the shape of the box and then also the material. In this case, this is just a black one. Then there's camera that you can control and put it in a certain perspective, and then light to give it the much needed realism, so to say. And that's all very good. And you can quite easily add 3.js. Uh, well, at least you can very easily install, install the Expo 3 package, which comes basically with everything that you need for that. And then you can just start writing normal 3.js scenes, which you can like see there on the left. You're adding a scene. You're adding ambient light to it. Well, before that, you added a camera, adding spotlight, adding the cube there, and then the material. Uh, all very good, very nice to, things to do. But still, with the React Native, with the React mental model, this is not the most fun experience to do. And thankfully, there's still one more solution. Uh, and that's React 3 Fiber. So what React 3 Fiber does is it expresses this 3.js uh, concept in JSX. And now the things just as meshes and, meshes and, and cameras and whatnot just become components that you lay out in a very similar way to how you would do a, like a React Native app. Uh, and you get, get to keep the same mental model and that's, that's personally my favorite thing about it, that is, uh, I can go back and forth. Uh, there's also another added benefit, and that's the fact that it provides like a common setup that with 3.js, if you're starting from scratch, you have to do all kinds of other things like adding anti-aliasing and color space to get it looking really nice. React 3 Fiber provides those out of the box uh, because it provides the basic setup to get by. You can, of course, customize it in any other way you want, uh, but it's just easier to get started. Uh, and the way code is structured in that is also, I'd say, easier to understand what, than the one, two other examples that I've shown you. Uh, so starting, for example, from the app, which is in logically in, in the bottom now, you have the canvas. And then on the canvas, you render a scene. And in that scene, you have the lights, and you have this spinny cube thing, which is the mess there on the top. 
and there you have the box geometry. And the arguments that you need to have then, or the props to control those, for example, the color, you no longer need to add them in the same way that you would have done with, with 3JS. So very easy uh, and very React mental model, uh, model if I say so. And animations are also pretty easy. Uh, well, static 3D is boring. Uh, would have been a bit of better picture to us, just to put a picture in that case. But if you need to put a, like, animate it in some, in some way, there's a hook for it. Just put the use frame inside the spinny cube thing, uh, and because it updates every, every, every second, or every six, 60 times per second, uh, you get to animate it nicely, and you get the result that I showed earlier where the box was spinning very nicely. Uh, and you can't call this on the top level, you need to call it in, in, in this, uh, inside the components, which of course then leads to you building components that you can easily share, even in the 3D world. And, well, it would be kind of horrible if you had to build, for example, the avatars that I just showed you on, on, on noise.com by hand. Uh, thankfully, there are like actual 3D artists that build those. Uh, and they can just give you the assets which you can then use. And 3x3 Fiber, uh, because it uses Expo assets under the hood, you just need to do a little bit of Metro config changes, and you can instantly take those assets and use them. And just remember to use Suspense when you're loading them, and you're good to go, basically. Uh, well, then the downsides. Uh, this has been a big thing at Noise. We've, con we've like, argued about it a lot. That we should we just go back to Unity? Uh, that's what most people, most people in the company are thinking of. Or then Kodot. Those are better for games. And as you saw, those kind of fall, even though the avatars are just like a small part of it, they are kind of like game-like elements. And you need good performance. Uh, and the performance thing has been a big problem that we've had. Uh, so it's very difficult to get it like 100% right. Uh, and especially with lower devices. So for example, we're now launching with only iOS because aren't turning on this, uh, th getting this run on Android in a way that would be like, well, business-wise, a smart decision uh, has been, well, to put it frankly, hell. But yeah. But yeah, there are some alternatives, uh, which at this point mostly seem to be like tweets about them, uh, which well, they look very promising. There's just a downside that, for example, if you have this situation where you already have stuff on the web, uh, you end up in a situation where you have to uh, have two diff quite, quite different uh, code bases. So, for example, we're probably going to stay with the React 3 Fiber and uh, Expo GL, uh, mainly because it allows for the most cross-platform thing. But hey, that's, that's all I have. So hopefully you took this very small ladder with five steps and you're not like this much up the ground and you have some idea how 3D experiences work on React Native. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>